everybody and welcome back to another little video in my Inktober Draw With Me series. Now normally when I film these little videos I record like a real time intro but I specifically remember on this day that I had a really sore throat and basically lost my voice and couldn't speak very well at all so I thought I'd say hello in this little voiceover instead. So yes welcome to this little video Um, you join me here as I begin sketching out some little bat studies in response to the third Inktober prompt word which was you guessed it bat. Now I was actually very happy that the prompt word for this day was bat because it was a very clear concise word that I could visualise a specific end result for. Sometimes the prompt words on these types of daily challenges can be a little bit like obscure and you have to try and make some tenuous link between them to make your illustration work which is a great way to improve your imagination skills and your storytelling skills and can be a very good way of making up original pieces of work and maybe make you draw things that you wouldn't usually draw. But on this particular day, I wasn't feeling very well and I really didn't have a lot of spare time on my hands to get this illustration done. So I was very appreciative that it was just a, such a simple, straightforward word. So even though I knew that I eventually wanted to go down a storybook or illustrative style for this illustration, I started off how I usually do by sketching out some little bat studies using a basic HB pencil. I did spend quite a bit of time refining the original sketches and particularly tried to focus on depicting the details. I especially spent a lot of time studying the wings as I thought they were a very distinctive feature of a bat. And I really tried to use the sketching process to understand the anatomy of the wing as I thought this might help me later on when I came up with the final illustration. I was really pleasantly surprised to discover that the bat's bodies were basically fuzzy little pom-pom shapes which made me very happy because it meant my final character design could be really cute and fluffy and gorgeous. So moving on, I decided to work into the first bat using a mixture of different inking pens. Each of these pens had various different nib sizes, ranging from tiny little minuscule little nib sizes up to very big chunky brush tip pens. And I basically alternated between these different pen sizes to fill in the different textures and shading areas on the wings. I do think the hardest part of studying the bat wings was trying to capture the shiny, slightly translucent areas of the wings. And I did sort of wish that I could have used like a white Posca pen or some Tipex or something over the top of the ink pens just to get back some of the areas of highlight. Come to think of it now I could have probably got away with using some white acrylic paint or some white ink but I didn't think of that at the time and actually challenging myself to only rely on the white of the paper to show the highlight areas was quite a good way of practicing my shading skills. At this point I desperately wanted to add some colour to the study so I coloured in an orange background behind it because black and orange is a colour combo that I usually associate with Halloween and then I added a bit more colours of that using my blue biro pen and kind of scribbled or layered over the marks I'd already made. I really liked using the blue biro pen as I could get quite a good difference in tone and it was very subtle colour difference to just using the black ink. So next up I got out my watercolour paints and basically painted a little background behind the second bat allowing a few different shades of blue to kind of blend in together. I was originally going to paint the whole bat in watercolour paint but as I said earlier I didn't really have a lot of time so I decided my time was best spent on painting the bigger bat study on the other side of the spread so I decided instead to just just use some simple line work to draw over this bat and add a few areas of detail. So yeah I just added a few simple marks to indicate details in the bat wing and some of the texture on the bat fur. Moving on, I decided to get my acrylic paints out and started painting the bigger bat. I decided to use acrylic paints as it is a medium that I'm very comfortable with and I knew I could get the study done fairly quickly without too much hassle. I began by layering down blocks of colour to depict the colours that I've seen on the reference photo, trying to pay a lot of attention to the light areas of the wings and the body. Once I had layered down the basic colours using my acrylic paints, I then alternated between using my Derwent Inktense Water Soluble Pencils and the acrylic paints. Tried to focus on adding texture and shading and also pops of interesting colour. I then decided to use my watercolour paints to create a really pretty sky colour in the background as I felt that the original wash of acrylic paint I put down was a little too light and needed a bit of colour in it. I also wanted to have an opportunity to practice the colours in the sky as I wanted to use this technique later on in my final illustration. Once I had finished studying the bats I got out a separate sketchbook and used it to visualise some of my illustration designs. I ended up thumbnailing in two little bat compositions trying to bring in a few things that I'd learnt while studying the bats. For example I really wanted to highlight the fact that the bats 
bodies with fuzzy little pom-pom shapes so I designed the back characters with really oversized fluffy bodies. I continued using my light blue biro pen when sketching out these thumbnails as I liked the fact that I could make light wispy lines when I was starting to create the composition designs and then more definitive assertive lines when I was a bit more sure about the composition. So yeah I basically came up with two composition ideas which had the same sort of story behind them i.e they both featured a bat flying through the air carrying a pumpkin but the layout was slightly different on both which I was fairly pleased with as it meant I could then choose between two different designs when developing my illustrations. So once I'd chosen which design was my favourite I then went on to transfer the sketch onto a separate piece of watercolour paper. The design I chose was a little gizmo the bat as I pulled in flying through the starry night scene carrying a rather menacing looking pumpkin which of course was wearing a witch's hat. So after spending a bit of time refining the sketch I taped down the paper on a board using some masking tape and yes that is also a hair clip in the corner and then I went on to working into the painting using my watercolour paints. So I started with the brightest part of the illustration which was going to be the pumpkin as I really wanted to get the colouring on the pumpkin right as I sort of knew that because it was so bright it would be the part of the illustration that would probably draw people's eye fur. I then worked into the hat making it a fairly warm purpley colour because I wanted to make sure that it would stand out from the blues that I was intended to use in the background. You'll notice that every so often when using my watercolour paints I use like a little cotton pad and kind of dab it on the painting. This is just basically to lift some of the watercolour paint and lighten some of the areas. I then moved on to painting Little Gizmo and decided to try and stick fairly closely to some of the colours that I'd used in the original studies. For example I used browns and ochre colours for Gizmo's fuzzy little bat body, um, dark browns and reds around his face and his nose and then a mixture of greys and ochres and blues for his tiny little bat wings. I think I also put a little bit of purple into his bat wings to tie the colour scheme together with the pumpkin hat. I did take a little bit of time to build the layers and the colours that I wanted but I felt that by doing it slowly I was able to get a nice variation of colours as well as some nice textures and tones. It was then time for me to start painting the sky so I started layering some different colours using the mixture of blues and pinks and purples and allowing them to blend and layer on top of each other. I decided to use elements of pink just to act as a little bit of a contrast in the bat wings but also to tie the colours in the sky in with the other parts of the illustration. So once I was happy with the base layers of the colour, I then started adding details to the illustration using a mixture of fine line pens and my light blue biro pen. I used the blue biro pen to add detail throughout the whole illustration as I felt that it would tie the illustration together and I also like how subtle it looked against the watercolour paints. You'll see that I drew several diagonal lines running parallel to each other over the background sky which I think gave the piece a little sense of motion and I was really pleased with that as I was trying to make it look like Gizmo was flying through the air. Once I'd finished inking my illustration I used my ink tense water soluble pencils to add a little bit more colour into the illustration and then finally got out my white acrylic paints to add some highlights, some texture details and add some spots and speckles for the stuff. So yeah, that's it for this Inktober illustration. I actually love this cute little illustration of my little fluffy little pom-pom back gizmo. It is definitely my favourite illustration of the Inktober series so far. Um, I can't quite decide if gizmo is flying through the sky or flying through space as I think that all the colours in the background does give it like a little cosmosy, spacey feel. But either way, I love it and I'm really proud of it. My only regret is that maybe I could have produced the painting on a bigger scale and then that would have given me the opportunity to add a bit more detail to gizmo's body and also add a bit more light and shade to his eyes. But I think given the time constraints that I had to produce this illustration and the fact I wasn't feeling 100% when I was doing it, I'm actually she really proud and I shall give myself a clap on the back. So yeah, thank you for watching this video and coming along with me on this little illustration journey. I really hope you liked this video. Um, please remember to like, share and leave a comment below and I'll see you again soon with another Arty Crafty video. Bye. -bye.